It's easy to remain stylish and fashion forward while warding off a chill. Just add a comfortable wrap. Sewing expert Mary Millari joins me to share how to transform your look in an instant with wraps. Welcome back, Mary. Thanks, Nancy. Wraps are really a versatile addition to any wardrobe and can be sewn effortlessly. The Aurora Wrap is our first version. Choose an elegant fabric to wear when you're out on the town or select a knit fabric to make your next wrap to wear at the office for those days when the air conditioning is too cool. All occasion fabric wraps. That's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture, custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Mary's Aurora Wrap has two variations. The simplest one is what Alex was wearing at first, embroidered curtain. <laughs> That's right. I look for fabric everywhere, Nancy. And uh, it's very simply made in that it has side seams and an opening in that seam. And then when we put this on, we open it this way, and then your arm and, and hand are inserted through the, the openings. And you get a little shawl collar effect if you turn this back. And it's two seams and a big piece of fabric. And we're going to share that with you, the size in our next option that's more open, which is the pink version. Yes, this one has the same uh, sleeve openings that we uh, did on the curtain and also a hem. But it has an opening in the front, so we can wear it just slightly differently. So this is a piece of knit fabric. And the size? Uh, 52 inches uh, by t uh, 32. 32, so it's almost a yard long. We folded this in half, meeting the long 52 inch lengths. And like that curtain, Mary stitched, I think, on your side. This is the side seam stitched. And then on this model, we left an 8 inch seam opening. That will be the sleeve opening. So just a seam on both sides. And then you turn this back and top stitch, which is on the other sleeve. And if you look close inside, Mary just did big zigzag stitches. I'd normally use matching thread. You Nancy. would. <laughs> yes, I would. Uh, but the, I like the zigzag. It gives stretch to the seam. The hem is the same way, just pressing up uh, 3 fourths of an inch, half of an inch, whatever you'd like, and then doing that zigzag so the whole bottom edge is finished. Now it would be much like that curtain. That's right. Or it didn't look like a curtain, but it, it's a beautiful uh, way to wear. A wrap, yes. yes. Scarlet never had it so good. No. And, and, <laughs> right. But now we're going to put an opening in it. We're going to use the same neck opening that we used in, a, in the previous program, Nancy. But this time I make a full size uh, op pattern so that I can trace uh, around the entire thing. And then I extend uh, the ends of the pattern to the bottom. And we have the fabric folded halfway, and then there's a fold line on the pattern. They align together, and then you trace that opening and cut it o cut it open. I, and I leave just about, through one layer. Yes. Oh, well, that's important. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I leave about a half an inch extra beyond the seam. And our next sample will show uh, how I would cut open this uh, neckline of this wrap. Here are. Uh, is an example, and it looks a little odd at this point, uh, but I've marked uh, two marks, and they're eight inches apart on the curve of the neckline. I, I have paperback fusible web, sure. and I'm going to actually cut into that. And then you've cut it, and we'll flip this around. This way, it allows you to have a nice curve of that seam. After, And this is the stay stitching on the edge. So with a little shaping around the neckline and some more stitching around that area, you have an Aurora wrap that can be made in an hour or less. 
with a book or e-reader in hand and this wrap around you, you're all set for a warm and relaxing reading session. If you prefer a lighter weight fabric, use the optional cutting line to transform the wrap front into a dressy pocket version. Throughout this two-part series, we are using a variety of fabrics, and the first fabric that we are going to showcase is an upcycled fabric. That's right, Nancy. The light pink fabric is really a, an old wool blanket that's been washed many times, mm -hmm. and I have uh, used actually the edge that used to have satin ribbon as the bottom of the wrap, and it has pockets uh, that I added, and I like to consider adding some candy bars into those pockets <laughs> for a really nice reading session. I'm with you. <laughs> Now, throughout this series, many of the shapes that we work with are rectangular or square, but this time you really do need a pattern, and it's a big pattern shape. Right, and it uh, it just makes such an interesting, warm, uh, nicely draped shawl. So we have had this made from uh, tissue paper, but the reference material tells will help you to draft your own version of this pattern mm -hmm. with the guidelines. And Nancy, this is when I would reach for my gridded pattern making material because the measurements, the one inch grid, really right. speeds this up. So you could count 27 inches across and 34 inches down. It's placed on the fold, so you need two yards of fabric to make this wrap. Now you can see the optional cutting line, the, either the straight line or the curved line. The curved line is on the batik fabric. It's the nice for lighter weight fabrics. This was actually a, a formerly a beach wrap, <laughs> and I turned back the edge on the line, and I turned this into a pocket here on the front, uh, though it could be sewn directly to the uh, body of the wrap as well. I used a little bit of bias on the edge of my turn back. To cover that edge. Right. So uh, it's just another nice option. So we're, this is the pattern piece, obviously, but here's this fold back that would be turned, the other right side would show, mm -hmm. and we would have, for example, on our fabric, we zigzag this edge. You could leave it zigzagged when you top stitch it, not to the tissue pattern, but we just want to show you how it's shaped. Or you could cover the edge as Mary has. So the reading wrap from a recycled blanket or to a batik fabric, you have many choices. Turn a large square scarf, which you haven't been wearing anyway, into a flowing cover-up to wear for an evening walk or a chill chaser over a sundress. The key to success is to add a faced neckline opening to the scarf. Here's how. You just saw Alex wearing this great scarf with the opening, and it was on point. Some really fun fabrics, and the facing is really isn't very evident, Mary, but it's, you used a very lightweight fabric, didn't show through. Right, and it's on the back side. It's hidden on, mm -hmm. on the back of the scarf with a little top stitching to hold it all in place. But if you couldn't find a fabric that was kind of camouflaged to the underside, you can make the facing predominant. Here on the orange uh, wrap, we've kept the facing on the right side or the top side. So it, it adds a little decoration as well as securing and making a strong neckline, Nancy, that uh, very durable for wearing. Our samples are, are somewhat smaller scale, just to show you the idea, but we have a rectangle that was been folded in half on point, and then... We have two sets of folds. and Once uh, again, and uh, then press mark. That's right. So we need both of those to be evident, so then we can uh, add our facing in the correct place. Uh, the facing pattern uh, looks like this and it has a line which you would align with what would be the shoulder line mm -hmm. of the fabric. Or that first press mark. And then I also recommend it cutting out a separate uh, small uh, piece so you can trace that on easily. So uh, traditional facings are cut with an opening in the neckline. This has the opening included at this point. I think it's easier, really. Uh -huh. I have the fabric here. I have lightweight interfacing on the back. And here is the line that indicates, again, what we align with the shoulder line press mark of, on the fabric. As well as the center being the press mark. Right. So we'll open this up. And... We have this all press marked, and we'll simply just position matching the pressing marks and pin. That's right. And then it's a simple matter, really, of sewing around the 
uh, edge or the line in the center and that's the neck hole opening line. And that's what I'm doing right here, just stitching with a short stitch length so that I can manage that curve gracefully and have an even stitch. And here we have it sewn around the edges. Now you're not limited just to silky scarf fabric. You could also use plush, but this time perhaps, Mary, you'd have to um, cut it out of a larger square and finish the edges. But we have st I've started to do the trimming around this area using a rotary cutter, or you can use a pinking shears, which has a... I, I really like a pinked edge for mm -hmm. trimming away because I think it actually clips and trims all in one step. Yes, and then clip to the center, mm -hmm. and we just flip this to the inside. And then a little bit of pressing and a little bit of top stitching, and your facing mm -hmm. is uh, in place to stay. Now there's more for scarves. Two long scarves put together with just an opening for the neckline is what Alex is showcasing right now. And you can see this is a quick way of making a caftan, a flowing wrap style. So with scarves, you have many options, whether it's square or rectangular. This repurposing project makes use of a sweatshirt body and a necktie for a casual cover-up. Check closets for sweatshirts and neckties no longer being worn and turn them into a wrap that is perfect for shopping at a farmer's market. Now when Mary showed me this wrap, I thought, how did you come up with this idea? Because the wrap, I couldn't figure out where the sweatshirt came from. Well, I can't resist a sweatshirt project, <laughs> Nancy. So here, our uh, sweatshirt, our model sweatshirt, uh, this is the upper, or actually the bottom ribbing of the sweatshirt. We've added a necktie with some ruffles in it. The edges of the sweatshirt were turned back and stitched in place, and back under this corner is a surprise little pocket. Uh, for your coins for the farmer's market. Uh, <laughs> it's a fun wrap to wear and uh, it makes use of something that, you know, we're repurposing again here. Sure. So this, we have small sweatshirts on our table, or size small, I should say, and the marking, this has many markings on it, but the first one is, you know, what's going to, what was the bottom now is going to be the top. And Mary, you've marked the center front, and I've just straightened I, I that like up a little to, bit. I uh, like to make sure it's a very distinct mark because it's going to uh, be important to follow uh, at a little later for stay stitching. But after marking the center, then we mark from the bottom of the sleeve over to the center line. And it's about four inches, I should mark, note, four inches from the neckline. That's right, on this particular shirt. And, and if it's longer, it might be a different pitch. Right, right. And we want to avoid l logos and motifs on the sweatshirt, but this will allow you to cut a plain sweatshirt open for this. Then you make certain that the hemlines or the ribbings are matched because you're going to cut both layers at the same time. And you're going to cut this V. We're going to cut here and over to here. But we're not going to cut open the center until we do some stitching. Now the stitching is already accomplished on this particular sample where we've stay stitched or stabilized just sewing through the front on either side, a fourth of an inch or so, on either side of the mark. And then it's safe to cut open the sweatshirt body. So the next sample has been all cut. And then you'll start to see how this comes together. Uh, we're going to pull this just a little bit to show how the wrap is going to take shape. So you get a point in the back, mm -hmm. two teardrop points in the front. And, and, yeah. and then uh, we'll be turning under the edges, or under or over. This set, we have pink thread here. Normally we'd use thread to match the sweatshirt. And then I would use a, a zigzag stitch to secure the edges in place. Maybe you'll want to round the edge here. Uh, so it's not quite yeah. so pointed. Here being at the point, so it's easier to maneuver. Right, right. But the choice is yours. And honestly, a sweatshirt's not going to ravel, so right. you really wouldn't have to even That's true. stitch it, right? That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, you have the, the wrap kind of shaped. Now for the closure. Well, we're going to use a necktie. Many mm -hmm. of us have these on hand in some state or other. And you take the tag off and then there's always a really nice strong thread and we can just simply pull this out and what we're going to do um, after that 
<laughs> this <laughs> takes pull. a little bit of pulling, but it's going to release the uh, tie. And so now we can remove all of the insides. And I have that from another tie. Uh, okay. It's, it's really easy to p get rid of that. It's we fast. don't yeah. need uh, all of that thickness and bulk for this sure. particular project. So set that aside. You never know when you might want to use it. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so then uh, the necktie is a lot softer. And so on the folded over edge, I have pieces of paperback fusible web. Mm -hmm. And I'd peel these off and then fuse the edges of the tie together. And let's bring up that next tie to show how we're going to shape it around the neckline. Uh, here we have marked on the tie the center, the, the middle of it. Yeah, so halfway point. And on the sweatshirt, I have the center back marked. So here we go. We're going to just meet, start at the center to center, and you creatively pin. Well, yes, and that's a great term for it, Nancy, because some ties are, are long and others uh, shorter, but we're going to make pleats. And that gives a little bit of interesting dimension uh, when we sew this tie uh, onto the sweatshirt. So we just keep pleating this and stitching, or not stitching yet. Here's a close-up of how I'm stitching, just top stitching around that neckline on an already completed sweatshirt. And our final sweatshirt shows how the closure takes place. Here we have the, the two sides that overlap. We have a little bit of hook and loop tape here. We have an opening uh, mm -hmm. planned here in the front. And then we uh, have more tape here. So <laughs> this is how we hold our wrap in place. Presto, a sweatshirt wrap. Choose soft and warm fabrics or recycle sweaters as shown here to create this wrap, a perfect extra layer. Accent the wrap with large, interesting buttons. The closure for this two-button wrap can be symmetrical or offset. Let your mood influence your style. Now this not only is a two-button wrap, but it has, first of all, fascinating fabric. Yes, this is, these are pieces of five different wool sweaters that just happen to be shrunk <laughs> or felted, as they might say. Uh, hot water, the agitation of the washing machine, and I found these sweaters to come together. They're really not so ravelly anymore when they're felted. And you can then dry them in the dryer. No worries there because you want right. them to be condensed. And the width of the fabric is 14 inches. And you have five different pieces here of this put together. And if we take a close-up look, you just overlaid the fabrics, one on top of the other, and then top-stitched. Couldn't be much easier, Nancy. No. The serging, uh, if you have a serger, I would recommend doing a three or four thread, as in this instance, serger stitch around the edge just to finish that. And then it's 60 by 14, and we have one buttonhole. And when you have a wool fabric, a, a synthetic suede patch is perfect. Right, it's decorative as well as strong. Uh, the buttonhole is about eight and a half inches mm -hmm. from the bottom, and it aligns with this first button, uh, the button closest to the bottom. So uh, as our model wore it this way, you can see the two halves align. Mm -hmm. But then just make it asymmetrical. I'm kind of an asymmetrical kind of gal, so this is my style. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. It changes the look. And this is a great warm layer to have uh, in many times of the year. Now, perhaps you're in a climate where you need something lighter or you'd like something fancier. We have just a 14 by 60 inch piece of fabric and it's a plush fleece. Yes, this one has edges turned back in, in a way that we've done before here in this series. And there's a large button here and my favorite closure, Nancy, <laughs> ponytail holders, and those wrap around this large button to hold the wrap in place. So there are lots of variations and also your size. If you're a taller person, you might want a longer wrap. Okay, of course. So you can see that we have shown you throughout this two-part series a variety of wraps from scarves, recycled sweaters, rain wear, curtains, curtains lace, rickrack, magnetic closures, it's very easy to make all occasion wraps in a very short amount of time.
I've read and heard many definitions of modern quilting. Rarely can I remember the explanation. When talking today, earlier with Nancy's Corner guest, I heard him say a modern quilt has little to do with style, rather it speaks to the issues of the day. I could relate and I knew I had the right person to interview. Please welcome Thomas Knauer, author of the book Modern Quilt Perspectives, who joins us from England via Skype. Thomas, thanks for being on Sewing with Nancy. Thanks for having me, Nancy. It's a treat to learn about your perspective on quilting and how you look at quilts. And we're just going to start right off by looking at a quilt that is a modern version of the log cabin. Um, in this quilt, Cinder Blocks, I wanted to update that metaphor of, mm -hmm. of working at, as the home as a basis for a quilt. And so I chose Cinder Blocks as the foundation material for most homes we live in and wanted to use that as a place to then just still play with color, but update that notion of where do we live and quilt as a metaphor for our homes. And instead of the red center of that log cabin, you have playful colors interacting. It's, it's joyful. Thank you. I love playing with four, five, six of the same color Mm -hmm. in the same quilt or tones of a color. Uh, and I hope it lets quilts pop. It, it does. And speaking of pop, the next quilt our viewers is going, that will be seeing is a quilt you call ampersand. Uh, ampersand is the symbol for the word and, and it was designed for my children. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a place where we tell stories. It's, the ampersand is composed of 225 different novelty prints. And Fun. we start... We start telling a story, and if the story lags, we point at a different print, whether it be monkeys or a spaceship, and the story takes off from there. I also love then when I come into a room by myself and I see that on the bed, and it's just this big existential and <laughs> staring at me, asking me what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'm inspired by that one. I can just see talking to my grandchildren with a quilt like that. I'm sure many of us will follow suit with you. Well, speaking of children, you like to make baby quilts. I, I have made baby quilts for my children. Almost everyone I know who has a, has a kid gets a baby quilt from me. Um, and this one was specifically made in response to our second child. Um, we wanted a second child, but after my daughter was born, I was diagnosed with a rare genetic disorder, and I didn't want to pass that on or mm -hmm. risk passing that sure. on. So we used a donor, and this quilt is based on mitosis, the two cells coming together, splitting to 4, 8, 16, 32, in a very blunt mathematical pattern, but as it all happens and comes together, it becomes a riot of color, which is, again, a metaphor for our, our son, who is a riot. <laughs> well, if he's as spontaneous, as fun as this quilt, I can see why he, you told me he was playing in the sunshine today in he, England, romping wild. through the garden. He is wild. <laughs> There's a, a quilt that has a, a deeper meaning. It's a wall hanging, and please explain that to our viewers. Um, excess comes from a section in the quilt, uh, a section in the book uh, about social commentary in quilts. And this one is, it's composed of 1,600 blocks, the same block, um, and each one represents one of the 1,600 people who are killed in domestic violence incidents every year in America. Um, Four out of five are women, one out of five are men, and that's represented through color in the quilt. Mm -hmm. And my amazing, the amazing quilter I work with, Lisa Sipes, she and I decided to quilt this with text from the Violence Against Women Act that was being held up in the Senate at the time we were making this quilt over extending the act's uh, protections to sure. people in same-sex marriages or same-sex relationships. And... Then even the, the shape of the quilt is, it is 13 and a half feet long. It is too long for any wall, normal wall to contain, which is, sure. a, again, another metaphor for the excess that each one of those deaths is. Well, it's beautiful, but unfortunately, the message that it portrays really speaks to my heart and to many. 
Thomas, you are an amazing quilter and amazing designer. I, I would like to invite you to come back some other time. I, I would love to and find a way to come out in person. Well, that would be even better. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh huh. And thanks to you for watching. This is part of our two-part series on all fabric occasion wraps. And Mary Malari, my guest, showed great design. And so you have lots to go home and sew. Go to nancyzeman.com to find out more information. You can re-watch the show and find out more about Thomas. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Mary Malari has written a book entitled All Occasion Fabric Wraps that is the reference for this two-part series. The book includes 14 easy-to-sew wraps and shawls. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2813. Order item number MP44, All Occasion Fabric Wraps. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding provided by Pellon. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.